the economic, radical economic, social, or whatever. Radical economic transformation. Uh, more radical transformation measures that are needed. Radical economic transformation. I started this radical transformation. You know, I started that thing. And I have seen that people have joined me. Yes. Smell the coffee. Perhaps what the deputy president is saying is the coffee is not strong enough to be smelled. Every few years before elections, we are promised a better life for all or radical economic transformation now or never. With all the promises, you'd think we'd be living in a much different country. When David and Letta Beloy heard in 2007 that their land claim was successful, they thought radical economic transformation had come to their corner of Limpopo. But for seven years, they struggled to get the land transferred into their name. We spent about hundred and something thousand to challenge the government to get the title deed for this land. Now they are struggling to get their business off the ground. Their tomatoes are rotting, their cabbages are infested. Electricity, infrastructure, the road. There's no road to come in here. David and Letta's problems are not unique. Millions of rural families are unable to make a living, even with access to land. Once you do give people the land, what processes and procedures do you necessarily put in place to ensure that they get access to the tools of the trade, they get access to the inputs that they need in order to work the land and farm the land? There's then the other issue, which is who am I then going to sell some of the stuff to? A handful of huge retailers dominate the food sector in South Africa. Together, their revenue is half a trillion rands and their profit is 20 billion. Their CEOs are some of the richest people in the country and they account for up to 97% of all formal food sales. And with the rising food prices in the supermarkets, 14 million South Africans struggle to feed themselves. Ironically, people who live close to food production live in hunger. Where's the radical economic transformation? Some free market economists think government needs to get out of the way to let markets operate more freely. So what people don't say is what you really want to do is take white land. Now, why would you want to do that? Because there might be a young 20-year-old white person who never lived under apartheid, never had anything to do with it, who bought a piece of land now. What account other than naked and crude racism would you want to take that person's land? By contrast, political economist Ayaboga Trawe says we need much stronger government intervention, especially to help small producers get their products to market. How do you regulate the distribution? How do you regulate the cold storage and the warehousing? How do you regulate the supermarket industry? Because in the absence of that, you are just setting up people to fail, you're setting people up to produce but uh, to produce for waste because at the end, nobody will actually have uh, access to some of those products. Market dominance is not just a problem in the agricultural sector. It affects mining, manufacturing and finance too. South Africa continues to lag behind in terms of small business development, unfortunately. Uh, this emerged at the annual Small Enterprises Development Agency, CEDA, stakeholders. One of the reasons why we've got agencies that are supposed to assist us is because we want to see small and medium enterprises contributing towards the GDP. Despite these programs, township entrepreneurs have it very tough and at least half of township youth is unemployed. Given the slow progress, some rural activists are skeptical of radical economic transformation. We see the beneficiaries of the radical economic transformation being the big elite uh, capital, one colluding with traditional leaders, colluding with politicians. Back on their plot in Limpopo, David and Leta Baloy are desperate. <laughs> Go to Mandela. Since I Mandela and I'm pushing